is Monday, January 8th. And as you can tell from a bit of video footage that I've put in at the beginning of this video, we're having another snow day today. It was supposed to be the first day back at school, uh, but it snowed all night and the side roads in the neighborhoods are quite bad. And all of the school buses for the for the school district that my children are in have been canceled for the day. However, the schools are still open. Um, and rule of thumb around here in this house is if the school buses are canceled, then it's a snow day. Even though my children live close, well, my son now lives close enough to walk, uh, Sarah goes to high school, it's still a snow day. They get to stay home and have fun. They get to have a day off. So they're downstairs and that is why I am recording upstairs in my little cubby hole again today because uh, I didn't feel like kicking them out of the downstairs. There's, you know, there's lots more things to, for them to do downstairs. So it's keeping them quiet and happy. So that makes me happy. I have lots to share with you today. It's all piled on my lap, just like the last time I recorded in here. So I'm going to try not to move too quickly so as not to dislodge this an avalanche of stuff from what's on my lap. So I'm going to start with show and tell because I said last week, well, I, I put in some, um, I edited it in that I hadn't really talked about the pieces that were behind me last time and I thought I would share them with you today. So they're very difficult to see in the picture here and also the lighting is terrible today because of the weather. It's very gray. It's very, um, well, the, the light is just not great. So I'm seeing that the camera is, the, the iPad photo, the iPad recording I can already tell is going to be a little bit grainy today and you know, we're gonna work with what we've got because, well, I'd still like to get a video out today and I'm, I'm sure that you don't really mind. You're here for the stitching. So I took some photographs of, the, of both designs that I have hanging on the wall behind me and I'm going to insert them here. So the first one that I showed you was another Nancy's Needle, one of my favorite canvas work designers from Nancy's Needle and that I believe the name of that is called Desert Star and it is also from the regional quilt series. Um, I don't, I no longer have the pattern, I, I gave it away many years ago, but that is the name of the pattern, I know that one for sure. And it's Again, same design, same same series of patterns that my Starry Skies, the, the blue counted canvas work that I'm working on at the moment, it's the same designer, the same pattern series. And I stitched that very quickly one year, I believe it was over Christmas break, and I couldn't put it down. So that was a ton of fun. The other piece that I also, put, I, I will have already inserted a photograph of it um, and that's the one just there. That is a Keslin design and unfortunately I do not remember the name of that pattern anymore. I remember that I did it on a 36 count fabric, an off-white 36 count linen and I used the this was back when it used to be called Crescent Color Works and it's the bandana colorway and now, of course, they, they, the company name has changed to Classic Color Works, uh, but I believe they're, they kept their, their range of names the same. And so it was the bandana colorway. It's a sort of maroon, warm, warm maroon red, and one of my most favorite colors of their line. I love it. And it is an over-dyed an over dyed cotton, I did not, I would never attempt to wash a project like that after finishing it. So while I was working on it, I always made sure that my hands were extremely clean, that I had, um, I would have worked on that on scroll rods. And I always, 
people attach their fabric differently. The way that I do it, when I'm putting it on scroll rods, I make sure that I'm stitching in the in the well of the fabric. So as I roll up the scroll rods, the main part of the design is being rolled up inside itself. So instead of rolling it outwards so that the top of the fabric is laying taut across the top, I do it so that my fabric is going the opposite way so that when I flip my frame over, um, actually, I think I can show you. I've got my, I've got my Frosty Forest right here. And this, so I, I can show you actually. So this is the scroll rod right here. And when I sew my fabric to the scroll rod, I just use scrap thread. I sew it to this part the, of the inside of the fabric that's attached to the scroll rod. Some people would attach it on this side so that the fabric would be here. But that for me is the back of my fabric. So I put it on the inside of the scroll rod so that as I roll up the project, the stitching that I have already completed is, is kept clean and free of dust and protected. So there you go. That's just how I do it. So that's how I would have stitched that one and you know keeping it covered up while it was on the frame and protected and then I did not have to wash it which when you're dealing with especially that kind of color in what could be a non-color fast thread probably a good idea because after doing all that work the last thing that you want to happen is to have all of that thread sort of bleed out into the fabric that would have been disastrous anyways uh, so that's my show and tell. I hope you enjoyed it today. And it is more proof that I do actually finish larger style projects. Um, my house is littered with them and over the course of the next however long, I hope to continue doing show and tell this style and taking you through the pieces that I've done in the past. Because for me, it's nice to revisit them and remember, oh yeah, I really enjoyed working on that. Someone pointed out in my last video where I had said that I really am all about the process and I love the start, I love the choosing, I love the dreaming, I love the making. And then when it's done, I'm sort of, well, you know, it's okay, whatever. And then she reminded me of the episode before where I had said, um, or, or was it in the same episode? No, it was the Friday off the grid that I said that. And then in the Monday episode when I was sharing the gifts that people had made and I was commenting on Carrie's ornament that she had sent me and saying you know I, I I really struggle with giving away my stitched goods she said I think that's proof that you do appreciate you do love the finish uh, and she's right <laughs> it's true when I think about it that way I do when the when I have the finished product I do love it and I do appreciate it I guess I just I'm ready to just move on and uh, keep working because time is short, my friends, and stash is huge. So time to get working, right? Anyways, so that's my show and tell, and I'm gonna move right into whips. I have a few today to share with you. Um, I'm gonna just start right back with the Frosty Forest since that's the one I was just showing you, but I didn't show you what I was working on. On last Friday's Friday Off the Grid, I was working on the Bluebird Cabin from Country Cottage Needleworks. This is, I think it's the sixth design, fifth or sixth design in the series. And um, this is, this of course, you can put the buttons on them if you wish. I actually own the buttons, but I have decided not to put the buttons on. I bought the buttons back when I was sort of waffling about whether or not I would put the buttons on because I thought maybe I might I might make it into a large pillow and then when I started stitching it I thought yeah that's not what I want to do with it I think I'd like to make it into a wall hanging either a wall hanging or I am going to frame it uh, for the wall it's definitely gonna be for the wall I'm not really a buttons kind of girl so I have all of these buttons they're somewhere tucked away in my stash probably at some point I will um, I will maybe I, I've heard a lot of things about stash unload I haven't looked into it but maybe I'll put them up on stash unload or something like that I don't know I'll have to figure it out first 
So Bluebird Cabin, that's what I was working on on Friday. And I can show you, I did a little bit more since Friday's episode. So that's where I am right now. And sorry, the fabric is pulling a little bit so that it's not very straight. I completed the door. I think this might be easier there. I completed the door with the wreath and I completed all of the leaves. Whoops, my finger's way over here. It's hard to see when you can't see the fabric in front of your face. I completed that tree. The second tree is now done. So the door is finished. The second tree is done. I've, I've done a little bit more of the snow on the roof and now it's time to get that roof done, get those snowflakes in and call it a finish. So right after I am done recording this video, this is going right back on my floor frame and I fully intend to continue working on this until Friday, which is when I will swap it out for my, uh, the other piece that I'd like to work on for next Friday. So I think if I just try to put in one or two threads a day from now, until Friday. I should be able to finish it. Should. I'm not putting any deadlines on myself. If it's finished, it's finished. If it's not, well, it'll wait until next week. No rush. It's supposed to be fun, right? Okay, so that's Frosty Forest. Little update. And the other thing that I worked on quite a bit this week was my hands-on design, the January Let It Snow. This is from A Year in Chalk. Let It Snow, hands-on design. These are really cute. Really, really sweet. A lot of white. <laughs> Just a reminder, I am using the Called For fabric which is the gunmetal, Weeks Dye Works gunmetal. Let me tell you, not my favorite. I'm gonna be really, really honest here. It's not my favorite um, to work on. I like how it looks. I really like how it looks when it's done, but stitching on it has been a little bit of a pain. My eyes are not great. Um, you know, I'm right at that stage in my lifespan when my eyes are changing and they're really they're really changing I'm aging and just last week I had to go and buy I, I had to go to the eye doctor and he told me I need progressive lenses not cheap let me tell you they were not cheap and they're not even ready yet so they're supposed to be ready at some point this week when I get them I might take a picture of myself and post it because I actually quite like them. I think I think they're a little, they're a slightly more flattering frame for my face than the older glasses that I was wearing. And in fact, if you've seen those glasses, and I know you have, they're sort of slightly horn rimmed shape. Those are my old, old glasses because the glasses I used to have that I was wearing before uh, were so scratched up that whenever I put them on, there was a constant haze in front of my face. I am seriously, um, nearsighted very very nearsighted and without I'm wearing contacts right now without anything to help my vision I can't I cannot um, function <laughs> so I'm a little nervous of getting progressive glasses I'm a little nervous that it's going to be difficult for me to get used to but I'm really hoping that it helps with my stitching because even now I'm finding with my glasses I'm having to put them down you know lower on my nose and I'm threading my needle without the having to look through the glasses because close up it works in my favor I can see quite well anyways once I get the new glasses I'll share and I'll tell you how it's going and hopefully fingers crossed for a smooth tr transition to um, for my poor aging eyes so anyways long-winded way of saying this fabric has been a, a little bit tough for me to work on but I am doing it with really good lighting and uh, not being overly fussy about the very occasional mistake. And I have left a couple of mistakes in it. And I'm not gonna share where they are because I don't think that you'll even ever be able to tell where they are. And if you can, if you can tell where the mistakes are, don't tell me because, well, 
I'm just gonna live in my bubble here. And I, I quite like it, I'm happy. Anyways, I'm still holding the pattern up. You wanna see my progress. So let's get a move on here. And, and I still have my needle attached. Hang on a second, I'm just gonna move my needle over there. Okay, so there we go. I've done quite a bit. It's a very quick stitch. But what is, again, slowing me down is that fabric really slowing me down. I should have been done this by now, but I have been struggling to see the fabric. So um, by next by next Monday, this will totally be done. I've been I've been loving having a small project to work on. Who knew? Certainly not me, because this is not my normal style. Picking and working on a small project is not me. And you know, having something to have all put together I keep it all in the same project bag so I've got I've got in my project bag I have my Q snap my pattern my I have a little extra pouch in there that has what have I got in the pouch I keep um, all my threads a pair of scissors and oh that beeswax that beeswax that Polly sent me I've been using it Pretty, pretty much religiously with this project and I'm really, really enjoying it. So again, I'll show you the tin to get on my thing. So again, this is that beeswax bliss. I love it. I'm really enjoying it. So great product plug there. It's, oh, it would help you if I told you. It's by Noteworthy Needle, 100% beeswax. Noteworthy Needle, there you go. Love it. Um, so again, I just, I keep everything in one project bag and then I, I just cart it around the house and sit down, put in 10 stitches here and there and it's working. I'm actually seeing progress. And so my, my idea, I'm not gonna call it a goal, I'm gonna call it my idea of trying to do one a month. I think I might actually be able to do it. We'll see. So anyways, that's my hands-on design. And that's really what I, I mostly focused on this week because I was enjoying it. Even with the fabric, I was still enjoying it. So just to be clear. Um, okay, so the last, the last whip that I wanted to talk about is what I'm gonna be working on on Friday for the next Friday Off the Grid. I am going to put back on my floor frame the landmark tapestries that I started um, back at the end of last year. And this is Savan. I am using the colors as charted. And let me tell you, they, they look little like the picture. This is just a computer generated picture, obviously. This is not a picture of the actual stitching. The floss is, is a little bit different. And what I have started is down here. I, I, I have a habit, I always love to start in the bottom left corner. And true to form, that is where I started with this. Just a reminder, I have not put any more stitches in this, but this is where I was when I took it off my frame last time. So, I'm hoping that by Friday, what I would like to do is I'd like to do a little bit more of the uh, 310 outlining so that when I'm talking on Friday, I can just do the coloring in. I think that would that would be a great, great thing to do. So a little bit more about Friday. Uh, I mentioned this on last Friday's episode. I was talking about um, something that I used to participate in back in 2008 and 2009, which was basically a Friday night stitch in, okay? And so, it was a blog, and it, the blog was called Let's Stitch. And you could be a member of that blog. So you had your own blog, but you could also participate. You could be a member of this joint blog. And the idea of it was that you would check in at six o'clock your time. So this does not have to be six o'clock my time. This is just 6 p.m. Friday night, your time. This is Friday night stitching. 6 p.m. your time. You would sort of you would log into the blog. You would 
you would either do two entries or you would just do one at the end of the night or the next morning you check in with what you've done so check in this is what I'm working on this is my starting point and then you do everything humanly in your power to not let anything distract you or disturb you from your stitching for the next six hours so from 6 p.m. until midnight it's your time to stitch and stitch and stitch and stitch and you know I know that Ginger Gerald and also Ingeborg left me a comment about this for many of you for many of you you get to do this all the time you get to you get to stitch whenever you want when you come home from work if you don't have um, you know anything else sort of calling your time when you're done your work or you're done your whatever that it is you have your evening to yourself already and so this really isn't that big of a deal for you but for me especially you know in 2008 that was when Nicholas was new and 2009 was sort of you know trying to navigate two kids one who was you know already going into grade two and the other one was just new like new toddler um, it's a very busy time and I also work a lot and so finding time to be selfish and selfish selfish is the wrong word uh, there's a wonderful thread going around by an English paper piecer on Instagram about calling it more self-compassion instead of being selfish about your your work and I'm going to I'll input her Instagram tag here. She's an English paper piecer. Her work is phenomenal and she is hosting the fussy cut along. Now in case you don't know what fussy cutting is for English paper piecing, um, I've shown you what English paper piecing is. Fussy cutting takes it to another level where you choose a fabric that has a, a print on it. Say, um, I think creative curator did one either with owls or owls was it owls or penguins I can't remember or maybe it was Sharon go forth they've, they've both been doing phenomenal fussy cutting uh, so anyways you take the little print that is your focus on the pattern and then you cut around it so that that becomes the very center of your hexagon and then when you put your flower together, your hexagon flower, you have the same print. So let's say it's an owl. You'll have six little owls all in the same place on your fabric all the way around the circle of your hexagon. So you're, fuss you're being fussy about how you're cutting the fabric print out um, in order to create the hexagon. And you can do some really, really amazing things with it. So anyways, I will put her Instagram information on the screen so you can check her out. She has been talking about self-compassion instead of thinking of it as being selfish. And that's how I like to think of this sort of this idea of a Friday night virtual get together. And you know, we've already got the, the, the party going with the off the grid style stitch with me videos that are happening. And it's not just, you know, obviously there are so many other stitchers doing Stitch With Me videos um, that it's, it's, it's incredible. I watched, um, oh, I have to get her name right. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up and I'll put the information on the screen. She did a Stitch With Me with diamond painting, which I had briefly heard about before, but I didn't know a lot about it. So I watched her Stitch With Me where she did some diamond painting. I know it's, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I I had to stop watching because I could feel myself, um, well, okay, I couldn't just feel myself. I actually went onto the internet and started looking up patterns and things like that. And I thought, okay, no, 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 no. I have to stop, I have to stop now because that is just a whole other rabbit hole that I just cannot do right now. So I shut down the my, my search in my, uh, my web browser and I I watched a few more minutes of her video but it really was rather tempting anyways I will also link her on the screen as well so that you can check it out if you're interested so Friday night I am now going to be self-compassionate to myself and I am going to make myself 
a drink, I am going to set myself up at the kitchen table and I am going to stitch on one project from 6 p.m. until midnight and it's going to be a large project. I'm going to save that time for my large projects and I think that with six hours I might actually be able to see some substantial progress on the piece that I'm working on, which I'm really excited about. So this week, if you want to join me, let me know. We've already got the Facebook group Friday Off The Grid and I think that I'm just going to keep it to that. It's very informal. It's very low key. Do it if you want. Don't do it if you don't want. And, you know, join us over on the Facebook group. I will, I will have um, a new hashtag. Let's just call it Friday Off The Grid Stitch In instead of Off The Grid Friday Party. So Off The Grid Friday Party and Off The Grid Friday Stitch In. That's a really long hashtag. So you can use both whatever um oh that reminds me there is a new feature on instagram if you've downloaded the most recent version of the app you now have the capability to follow hashtags which is great because it used to be really you know you'd have to remember to click on the click on the hashtag to go in and check everybody's thing if you weren't following someone already and it, it wouldn't just appear in your feed. And so this makes things really easy to follow along with everybody else who's sort of using the, the same hashtag. So I, I downloaded it a few days ago, I've been using it, it's really, really great. Um, and I've been able to follow a few more, um, someone called them gritters the other day, which I thought was really funny. So I've been able to follow a few more gritters on Instagram I'm way too old to use that lingo, I'll tell you. Michelle Bendy can get away with using slang and funny language because I love how she talks, but I can't get away with it. I'm way too uncool for that, so <laughs> I can't use the word gritters. My fellow stitchers who are stitching along with me on Friday night, go ahead and use those hashtags. So that's it, that's it for whips, that's what I've got. The other, th only other thing that I wanted to share is from the stash pile today. And this is, this is stash pile that is not kitted up properly, but it is something that I fully intend to start. And I'm really hoping to start it this week. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I'm not 100% on my fabric yet. So once I've decided on my fabric, maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, that part of kidding it up on Friday but these patterns and I use the word patterns plural have been in my stash for a really long time I have a funny feeling this is something that Vana started I'm gonna say 2013 earlier I don't know I'm not sure if Vana watches but maybe I'll ask her because I'm pretty sure I remember that she was the one who started this originally where we all had this, not I didn't have the idea, but a group of women had this idea to start the Prairie Schooler alphabet on one piece of fabric. I bought these patterns way back then. I even started it. I had the fabric, uh, I bought, I purchased some fabric. It was linen, which was a huge mistake. Not that linen is a huge mistake for you, should you choose to do it, but for this, because I want to do it very small, the linen that I chose was just completely wrong. It was not fun at all. It made me very unhappy. I started with the, uh, the ampersand at the end. This was the one I had started with. And doing that black on over, you know, it was, I was using one thread over one on a really small linen. It was not fun. So I'm going to either go with a one over two on a 40 count, or I'm going to go and buy a huge piece of 25 count and do it over one. That's kind of how I'm leaning. Stitchy Mom is joining me in this. Letitia Crafty Curator has already started. She started hers last year. She's got the A mostly done. And Letitia, if you're watching this, get it back out. Now's the time. Speaking of Letitia, she finished the 
piece that she was working on, the tribute to her father. It's called The Embrace. It is probably one of the most moving pieces that I have watched a stitcher work through. Um, her whole process from start to finish. She started it last October. She just finished it yesterday. It's stunning. It is stunning and it almost makes you want to cry. So go check it out. It's all over Facebook at the moment. If you're on the Stitch Mania group or the Friday Off the Grid, you've already seen it and you know it's uh, it was an amazing piece. So Leticia, well done and thank you so much for sharing your journey with us because it was pretty special to watch. <sighs> So Leticia has the A almost done. Time for you to get back on that. And Stitchy Mom is going to be starting this with me. And I know Frankie Easter on Instagram. She also has just started this recently. And there's a whole bunch of other people doing it on Instagram. Is there a hashtag for it? I don't know. If you know, or I should just go on Instagram and check their posts and see if there's a hashtag for it. I could just do that. It's just like when I asked about the stash tea, you know, where can I find the stash tea? Uh, maybe you should check the internet before you ask that question because it's on Amazon. <laughs> I never think to check Amazon, which I realize sounds completely ridiculous. I do live in this century. I understand how to, how to use a computer and the internet. Um, but no, I never check Amazon. You know, I hardly ever buy things from Amazon. So... It never crosses my mind to check it. But yes, you can buy Stash Tea on Amazon. Apparently, Stash Tea also has their own website. I may check out their actual website first uh, before going to Amazon. So we'll see. I think I'd rather buy it from them directly. So that is it for show and tell, whips, and new start coming down the pike from my stash pile because. These patterns have been in my stash pile. I did not purchase them recently. They've been there. I need to use them. So I'm also, it's it's all DMC. So no specialty threads, just DMC. The only thing I need to get for this is a humongous, ginormous piece of fabric. So that's exciting. Okay, that's it. Great. Um, the other, oh, before I move on to a little shop update today, the other thing that has been really taking up my time this week and that's why I'm sharing it with you today, because I think it's fair game. Uh, I have mentioned before that I, I am part of a knitting podcast called Fiber Friends. And my two closest friends, knitting friends here in, in London, Adrian and Louise. Um, now, I use the word closest loosely because I am extremely fortunate to have a number of very close stitching friends. Now try not to be too jealous because I realize that it's rare, but I have an entire community here of stitchers and knitters who I think are pretty fabulous. So anyways, two of those fabulous stitchers and knitters joined me on the Fiber Friends podcast. And Louise, who is our knitting instructor of the trio, um, she and I have a little contest going on, a little competition, if you will, to see who can finish their shawl, who can knit their shawl and be done first. And both of us are rather pathetic. It's been taking us a while. And Adrian, our third member, who is a yarn dyer, who I talked about on Friday, uh, she has lapped us and has completed two shawls in the same time that neither Louise or I have finished anything. That's all a big lead up to say it's not done. So. I'm not showing you a finished shawl. So Louise, if you're watching this, put, you know, don't worry, don't have a heart attack. I'm not done yet, but I have been working on it a lot. So this is, um, I started off with a shawl pattern by Lisa Much, who is from Barrie, Ontario, Canada. Her website is NBK Knitting. She is the most stylish, fabulously modern, gorgeous knitter you will have ever seen. She designed this pattern called Noctilio. And that deep blue part of the shawl is actually Noctilio as written. This part of the shawl is Noctilio Caroline's version because, um, well, I had to. I had to make some big changes because of yarn requirements and what I did and didn't have. Anyways, 
Long story short, it looks like dog's breakfast because that's what all knitting looks like until it's been blocked properly. So when once it's blocked, the, those stitches will be stretched out and it will be a triangular shape and it will be fabulous. Right now it looks, it looks awful, but I have been knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting and knitting. So I'm really trying to have it done by Friday because that's when we record again. And I'd love to just, I'd love to pull out a finished shawl and win the contest. That's what I'm going for. So wish me luck. I don't think Louise is gonna watch this episode before Friday. So wish me luck. And that's it. That really is it for whips. Okay, so quick little shop update today. I have some new bags up in the shop. Um, I'm gonna show them on the podcast here because they don't always photograph to their best their best angle on um, Etsy. And I am certainly not a professional photograph. So this is my chance to actually show you in real life what they look like. And of course I'm dealing with not perfect lighting conditions today either. However, bear with me. Um, I have some medium cross stitch totes up in the shop right now. I also have new medium wedge totes up in the shop. And I have a few of the large handled bags, which are perfect for you know taking your stuff to retreats, um, packing all of your projects in. If you're not crazy and you only have a limited number of whips like Ginger Gerald and you actually work through them all and get them done, maybe you'd like to keep them all in a large handled bag. Then you can tote it around your house. Anyways, I'm not going to show you those. They're all on the Etsy website. I thought I would just show you today the three different medium sets that I still have on the site. Throughout the week, I have a few more bags that are cut. They just need to be sewn together, so I didn't bother to bring those on to show you today. I will. Um, I always post on Instagram once I have new bags in the shop, so uh, you can follow me at Evertotes on Instagram if you're interested. So this is um, bag one, a print that I'm really partial to. I love those those birds. They're, it's like a heron. The material that I used on the bottom is a denim, so it's quite heavy. It's quite heavy. It feels quite nice. So the bag is fairly substantial. We use cotton bat on the inside. It's an 80-20, so 80% cotton, 20% polyester. There's no interfacing in the bag. We sew the bat into the, the into the bag. There are no exposed seams on the inside. And the zipper opens up to the full width of the bag. So this fits an eight inch square or an eight by 11 Q-snap quite nicely with enough room still for a project and, sorry, for threads and pattern. So they open up quite wide. So even though it's a flat tote, you can still fit a lot in there. So that's the bag and I showed you the lining. I've made a matching Notion pouch that goes with it. This is the same lining fabric. And in fact, I did something a little fun. I used a fourth fabric on the Notion tote and I put a neat little and I did not put a picture of that on the website. So that's a little secret between you and me. That was fun. So there, I think I've got three of those. Uh, the next one, oh, I only have one of these left. It's flamingos, flamingos with a triangular bottom, which is super cute. The lining, nice black zip that matches the flamingo's beak. The lining is a lovely coral that matches the flamingo and matching notion pouch, same color, same fabric as the lining. I've got one of those. And last but not least, for new medium totes, I love this one. It's covered in stars. It's a gray background, dark gray with, um, I think, did we use black? It's hard in this light. I think it's black. Sometimes our black and our dark navy, if the light's not right, you really have to look at Yeah, it's black. Yeah, black zip. So there you go. Yeah, it's definitely black. That is color. That color is true. So there's a gold bit of sparkly star in there as well. And the lining, 
was, it's a white, and I don't know if you can see this, but it has a sparkly little star on it. It's not sparkly per se, but when the light hits it, all you can see are these pretty little stars. So that's the lining on that one. And again, the Notions tote, we matched the outside fabric for that one. I think I still have two of these left. There's still a few medium wedge totes left if you're interested in those as well. They make great project bags for um, smalls, you know, for an eight, they fit an eight inch square Q-snap. Um, so if you're working on, or a six inch, six inch square Q-snap, if you're working on a small project on Q-snap or a hoop, they're a great size for that. That's it for shop update. A couple of little bits of newsy bits. Uh, well, one one little bit of newsy bit. There was a new floss tuber that I just watched last night for the first time because she posted in the Facebook group that she had done. Oh, it was the it was the diamond painting. It was the diamond painting floss tuber. I am going to look up her name because it seems ridiculous that I'm not telling you her name. Um, her, I know her name is Sarah. The name of her channel is Little Snips. That's the name of her channel. So her floss tube channel is Little Snips. And she is the one who did, she's calling it Diamond Tube. No, you can't see that. Diamond Tube number four, Diamond Paint With Me. So she's the one who I was watching the diamond painting. I also went back and I watched her latest Floss Tube episode, Floss Tube 24. And again, like I said, her name is Sarah and her, her YouTube channel is Little Snips. And the reason why I wanted to mention her channel and her, la her last Floss Tube episode was because she showed a hoop lap frame that I thought was a very, a really great bit of information. I'd never seen one before. Like I have seen one before, but I have seen a much larger one used by rug hookers. Um, and I think actually that was even a floor frame that had the hoop up the top. So I could even be way off base there. This was a plastic hoop that had, it's, okay, so it's called the Morgan lap frame Morgan lap frame and again if you want more information and you want to actually see the thing floss tube number 24 little snips she shows it she talks about it she has been using it she loves it I've had a lot of people ask me questions about frames and stands lots of people are concerned obviously concerned about price this she bought off Amazon I think it was under $25 she says it works really well. She uses she has been using it all the time. If you're a hoop user and you're looking to start to stitch two-handed or give your hands a break because of pain or arthritis, this might be a really great option for you. So again, Morgan lap frame and you can find you can check out her last floss tube episode where you can actually see her talking about it and using it. So, I hope that helps someone. Anyways, that's it. I'm at like over 40 minutes here. And I didn't think I had that much to talk about today, which I guess I did. Now, my dog has been in the room again today, and I've just heard her give a big sigh. And I didn't think about that while I was recording. So it's quite likely that when I go to edit this, I will hear some snoring again in this video. So hopefully you find it charming and not annoying. That's it for me, folks. I'm off to do some more paperwork. It's Monday, so, and it's, I'm back into January swing of things, so it's back to teaching, back to paperwork, and hopefully tonight when I sit down, I'll find a few more minutes to knit a few more rows on my shawl and put a few more stitches in whatever strikes my fancy. Happy stitching, everybody. I'll see you Friday for Friday Off the Grid. Take care.